We looked at some code last class where we were trying to create a counter of vowels given a, an input character string. So give me a string, I will tell you how many vowels are in that string. And this little excerpt, a little uh, bit of that code from the script that we were using is confusing. So I thought it might be a good idea to go through this line by line and see if we can step through it and sort of figure out what's going on. So let's see what's happening. So we start with this set output string to blank. So the output string is going to be used for our result, our answer to the question, how many vowels in a string? Uh, so that's that one. Now the counter here, that we're initializing to zero. Now what the counter is, is the place where I'm going to store how many vowels I'm actually finding. And eventually that gets stored in our output string. Uh, then we move along to setting a variable called i to one. And what this is going to do is it's eventually going to be the thing that points through all the letters that's in our input character string. And speaking of that string, our input string, um, this comes somewhere from the user. So somewhere ahead of here, we had some kind of code that said, type in an input string or something more clever than that. Um, and it was hello in this case. That's what we're using in our example here. Obviously, it could be many other things. So we have an input string, great. Okay, then we're gonna go through this big repeat loop right here. So it's a kind of a, a large-ish loop. And what's happening in here? Well, first thing we do is we set another variable called j. And we're gonna set that thing to one. And then we go through another repeat loop. So we have a loop within a loop. So right now i is one and j is one. And let's see what we're kind of doing in this loop. So the first thing we're doing is we've got this big green blob, which is an or condition. And just a reminder, or conditions are each condition um, has to be false for the thing to fail. And so we're in a repeat loop. So you repeat until that green blob in here becomes true. So that means one of the things, on the thing on the left side of the or, or the thing on the right side of the or has to come true. So the first thing we're looking at, at the thing to the left of the or, is letter I of input string. So let's see what that means. I is one. So what we're actually doing here at letter I is we're saying, what's the first letter in input string? So that's going to return H. Letter I of input string is letter one of hello. So this is really representing the value h. And we want to see if it equals letter j of a, e, i, o, u. So I hard-coded what we're searching through. You could have put that in a variable, but I hard-coded a, e, i, o, u. Now j is a 1, and I'm looking now at string a, e, i, o, u. So it's pointing to the a in a, e, i, o, u. So what is the left part of this or statement doing? It's comparing the H in our input string to the A in our vowel string. Now, are they equal? Does H equal A? Well, no, it does not. So that part of our OR statement is false. And then we get to this part of the, the OR statement to the right. So is J bigger than 5? Well, J is 1. So that's also false. So in an OR statement, a false or false will yield a false. And we think about what we're doing. We're repeating until something is true, but it's false. So that means we're not going to end our repeat loop. We're going to go here to this change j by 1. And what that does, it's going to add 1 to our j. So j isn't 1 anymore. It's 2. So now when I loop back around, uh, I'm still looking at letter 1 of input string, but now I'm looking at letter 2 of a, e, i, o, u. So I'm really looking at the e. And so now I'm asking, is H equal to E? Well, no, it's not. My J is still bigger than 5, or rather my J is smaller than 5, so J greater than 5 is also false. So my repeat until is still false, so I'm going to go back into my loop and I'm going to change J by 1 again. So it's 3, which essentially moves it to the I. When I loop back up, I'm still looking at letter 1 of input string, the H, but now I'm looking at letter 3 of A, E, I, O, U, which is I. So is H equal to I? No. And J greater than 5 is still false. So my repeat until is still false. I'm going to go back in my loop, and I'm going to change J to 4, which essentially moves the arrow, the place I'm pointing to in A, E, I, O, U, to O. So now I compare H to the O. 
Still false. My j is still not bigger than 5, so I'm going to go back in the loop that says change j by 1. So let's go change j by 1, which now I'm pointing to the u. So is h equal to u? That's still not true. Now what happens now is my j is going to get bumped up to a 6, which is essentially pointing to nothing in my AEIOU string, right? There is no letter 6. So that's going to be false, but my j bigger than 5, that's now true. So in my repeat until, um, the left side of the OR is false, but the right side is true. Now with an OR, you just need one or the other to be true. So my repeat until now has a true statement. So I'm going to jump out of the loop. Now where do I go? Right after my J greater than 5 fails, or it's true rather, I go into this J less than 6, which it is not. J equals 6. So I'm not changing my counter. I run right by it, and I'm going to change I. I is the counter of my input string. I'm going to change that thing by 1. So now that's a 2, which essentially means the next time I look at letter I of input string, I'm looking at the E. So um, I'm doing this, this big loop, the, the number of letters I have in my input string, and now my, I'm at 2. So I basically get back to the top of my outer repeat loop. Uh, I'm going to set J back to 1 because that's what it says to do, which means I'm pointing back to the A. So does E equal A? No. And my J now bigger than 5 is not true. So I'm going into the inner repeat loop, which is going to change J by 1. So that goes to 2. There it is. Which essentially says now I'm checking E. Now here, E in my hello is going to equal the E in my AEIOU. I'm going to get a true statement there. So even though my j bigger than 5 is still false, the clause to the left of the or is now true. So I'm going to go out of my repeat loop. I'm going to go out of there, and I'm going to get to the part where it says, if j is less than 6, change the counter by 1. And when I do that, um, I've, I've counted one vowel. So now I want you to picture the rest of this, where um, I'm going to change the j to 3. I'm sorry, the i to 3, which will point to the first l. And then I loop back in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, going through A, E, I, O, U. L is in any of those things, not going to increment the counter, so uh, the, the vowel counter. So then I go and I change item is going to be 4, and then it's going to be 5. Now 5 is a vowel. It'll flag that. My counter will be set to uh, 2. The exclamation mark isn't any of A, E, I, O, U either, so that won't get counted. And when I'm all done, the counter will be 2. Um, I only animated up to two steps because this was a little bit hard to animate, but it's kind of good in a way because it, it, I want you to try and see if you can now kind of work through all those loopy things that are going on. Now, if you can see that, that is fantastic. It may take you a few times through to really see it because it is kind of hard. Um, don't feel bad if you're just not getting it right away. This is pretty complicated stuff. Don't give up. I think you can do it. Uh, but don't feel bad if you can't. And by all means, come talk to me if you have some more questions about it. Uh, thanks again for watching. You guys can do this. You're great. And keep trying.